battery powered cyborg sloth. Here we go. Left end stop is 5.7 centimeters away. Right end stop is 7.5 centimeters away. My name is Sloxel. How may I assist you today? <laughs> it works. Yes. My British cyborg sloth secretary. So this is a brainchild of mine that's been on my mind for the past couple years, ever since I got into electronics as a hobby and AI research as a profession. However, I procrastinated indefinitely just because the AI part of doing the speech and the vision and everything that I wanted to put into this was gonna be a real slog. And I was kind of ready for it, but I wasn't ready to make the dive until OpenAI released ChatGPT. And I've been playing with ChatGPT4 and I immediately saw the potential to turn what was gonna be a multi-month AI research effort into like a couple API calls to get this guy to be conversational. So my ultimate goal was to have this guy on the front porch and he could go up and down a really long railing to greet people at the front door. And I want him to have conversations with people to assess their intent and then give them permission either to knock on the door or tell them to just leave their information and we'll review it later and then tell them to go away. Uh, Cause we do get a lot of people knocking on our door that we really don't have any interest in talking to. So this is gonna be a part one video essentially about the electronics and 3D design of this guy and everything that you see here so far. So I knew at the start of this project that I was gonna have a lot of components and I was gonna be really space constrained. So I made a Fusion 360 model of everything. I wanted to make sure that everything fit and that there was clearance for everything. And then I also wanted to try a rather unique design strategy for this electronics enclosure uh, that, that should be pretty obvious just from looking at it. There's two main parts of it. The first is the wings. So this is actually five of the six sides of the electronics enclosure. You normally just print the base platform and then maybe you print the four sides separately and attach them somehow. Well, I've got them all together, printing them as a single part, a single really large part, and they hold together with these print in place hinges. So this side right here, is just a loop attached to the, to the wing. And then there's a pin going across that it rotates around. Most printers can bridge that well for this pin to go all the way across. And I even use PETG for this whole print, which is traditionally not good at bridging. And it, it, it is a little crunchy, but it, it works. So it doesn't need to be smooth. It just needs to be able to fold up and hold in place. And you can actually see, I can, I can demonstrate the folding by doing this. And you can see with it folded, that the there's a space right here for heat set inserts to go into so you can thread m3 screws into them and then on the opposite side is the screw is the through hole for those screws and i've got that on all four corners to hold it together once it's folded up and then i've got actually the same thing here then i can just also put screws in the top here and thread them into the holes underneath but there was actually a second purpose for doing the wings like this. If you were to print all five sides as one rigid box, it is a total pain to get the components in there and wire them. But when you can fold the sides down, you have access to put things onto those wings. It makes assembly and maintenance so much easier. And then the other unique feature, which sticks out like a sore thumb or like a hundred, these are actually zip tie anchors. So I've got them running in both directions. So you can slip a zip tie in this way or this way. In some cases, you may use them to fix a device in place. Like for instance, you can stick a zip tie through this hole right here. You run it over, over the part through here and then back over and connect it and it holds it firmly in place. In this case, you can see that some of these parts actually have pins that poke out through the bottom of the PCB. So this actually serves two purposes in allowing you to use these zip ties to hold things in place, but also add some space and ventilation. And you can see over here in the main section that I also added holes underneath. And then finally, if I do decide that that wasn't something that I wanted, these are actually super easy to just snip off with flush cutters. Now I didn't leave everything completely to zip tie anchors. I did know that I was going to have, for instance, Raspberry Pi here. So I added specific anchors for those as well as the battery pack here. So for the battery power, I could have bought like an RC battery pack, but I had these 18650 batteries laying around. And even if you do buy one of the prepackaged ones, you're still gonna need a BMS, which is a battery management system. And so that's what I've designed into here. I designed and printed this 3D, this blue part here, which holds both the BMS in it underneath and, and allows space, it, it allows full airflow above 
and below it. These are custom wheels. I'm not sure I would recommend doing it this way, but it's it's something I really wanted to try. I thought it was kind of fun, and it was fun, and it works, but I think there are better ways to do this. I designed this wheel base and tread, which supports both 608 skateboard bearings as well as a custom motor insert. And if I get rid of the tread, you can see the way it's designed. This, this would be printed in a hard plastic, and then I used a Ninja Flex uh, TPU. It's a very flexible material, and it has just that right kind of friction against the aluminum, which will help it grip it really well for, for motion. And this weird-shaped insert is actually a dual-purpose insert, so it can either be used to put a 608 skateboard bearing so that these can be used as idler wheels, or you can come over to here and print a separate part. It will be used to couple the wheel to the shaft, and then I can slip it into the wheel base and secure it using two screws here, and then I can just slip the tread on top of that. And then here I've got the Raspberry Pi, which is the brains of everything. I made sure that I had enough space to get to the USB ports here because I need that for the Oak camera. I need it for the microphone, for the speakers, a couple other little things. At the end of the extrusion, I have a little thing that sticks up and, well, it physically blocks the thing from running off the end, but it'll also allow this ultrasonic rangefinder to detect it and it uses that to know to stop before it gets to the end. And finally, something that really added to the complexity here, I do have these wheels. You can see that they mated with the aluminum extrusion. That's a V-slot extrusion, and I, I matched the tread. But of course, tolerances are always kind of weird, so I had to add tensioners. So here I can put some captive nuts in these hex holes, put the screw into here, and then when I tighten these screws, it'll, it'll pull these two wheels towards each other. Similarly, I've got these wheels on top, which might also have tolerance issues, pulls the, the wheel down and the platform up which allows me to fine tune that tension. milestone here. Yeah, I know it's not pretty. Here's the power for the batteries. Uh, I needed it to be detachable, so I got a, I used a barrel jack that I can swap out with a barrel jack from a wall plug. So this is plugged into the wall right now. That way I can keep this on basically all the time and do development on the Pi remotely uh, without having to worry about the battery running down and recharging it. So battery spit out 14 to 17 volts. Well, the motors are powered directly from the battery, and this is a converter to step down to 5 volts up to 10 amps, so that should be more than enough to power everything on here. I've got the ultrasonic rangefinders here on each side. So that's what's going to detect the uh, the ends of the motion, so it can slow down when it gets too close to the end. These ultrasonic rangefinders uh, emit their signal at five volts, and the Raspberry Pi pins are three volts. So at the last minute, luckily before I fried the Pi, because if I send five volts to one of these pins, you're gonna damage the board probably. So I had to make this stupid little voltage divider circuit. And eventually, I'm gonna have a top on here. I'm just gonna go over it uh, with a camera, a microphone, and speakers, and a face. So I started with this face that I downloaded from Thingiverse. Uh, it was a soft face for a completely different application, but I was able to adapt it for what I needed. Uh, I, it started as completely flat. Uh, solid and I was able to cut out the eyes and the mouth and then make uh, little mounting holes extensions for the Oak One camera which is what I plan to use eventually to do uh, visitor identification and uh, face tracking. Now I originally had planned on doing the pan tilt mount uh, I used for the 
Halloween creeper face that would follow you. Uh, since this sloth is moving on a platform, I figured I can kind of center it where it needs to go just by rolling back and forth on the porch. And I don't need the pan tilt at the moment. I, I didn't want to overcomplicate things. And after I got the camera eye in there, I made this really kind of weird uh, mount for LEDs that would be used to illuminate the face when it's talking. Uh, the the design of it is really odd, but it does fit. It, it, it does do what it's supposed to. And my intention was to print it with a semi-translucent filament so that it would diffuse the light a little bit from those LEDs. Once that was all done, I was able to print it. I determined that the best way to print this was to be face up on the build platform, uh, which no matter what I did, it was going to be a lot of supports and removing them was, was certainly not easy. I didn't intend for the final product to be PLA, but this was a basically a test print that has now become the production print and that's, that's fine. Uh, so I, I went ahead and spray painted it and then started attaching it to the top of the electronics box. Here's where you can see that I was able to just simply use flush cutters to trim off those little knobs that are on the top that are normally used for zip ties. I could have actually used those to attach the face, uh, like actually use zip ties to hold that in place, but I wanted something a little bit more reliable because I didn't know how much torque this thing was going to have or how much abuse it was going to have, and I didn't want those nubs to tear off. So I just trimmed them off with, I just cut them off with flush cutters and then added uh, heat set inserts to the stand on the face and then was able to secure them with screws uh, from the backside of the, of the top. And with all that attached, then I was able to simply put the speakers in place using mounting tape because it was kind of awkward to do with zip ties. And then a couple more heat set inserts and screws to attach the face itself to the static mount that I had created. Then just had to route some wires to get them inside the box, fold it up, and attach them with the thumb screws. And we have a fully mobile, battery-powered sloth cart. So I still had a bit more engineering and wiring and stuff to do, but my, my daughter and my wife couldn't stand to watch me working on this really bare white face anymore. So I took a break and let them paint that while I went off and started working on the LED mounts for the eye and the mouth. I printed this in PCTG, which is a newer material. It has a nice optical clarity to it. Print quality on this wasn't great. I think maybe it wasn't fully dry, but it didn't really matter to me because I was just about to go up to the garage to sand it to give it a nice frosted look. However, I had an interesting surprise when I went up to the garage. Somehow overnight, an entire cabinet with power tools and spray cans had actually fallen off the wall and somehow none of us woke up. Not relevant to the project at all, but I just really had to share it. Uh... So I do have an updated version of the face that has mounting holes for this. As you can see, I've already got the face in pretty good shape and I already decided to paint it because my kids were impatient. So we're just gonna roll with it. So I think it's hot glue time. Of course that's a little bit off and it's a little bit late for that. That's okay, it looks fine. Pretty good. My name is Sloxel. How may I assist you today? So that's as far as I'm taking you with Sloxel today. I have so much to say. I'm really excited to go over uh, what my plan is to do with the AI, with the conversational aspect, what I'm going to do with the camera and the microphone and all that stuff. So that's the end of the video. Take it away, Sloxel. If you want to see more of my beautiful face, hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching. Wubba lubba dub dub. <laughs>